Greetings, everyone. This new class on seal number 13, the white brush. A normal review while people connect. Seal number 11. Remember that? Super easy. On Gamara Swaha. 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 Om Gamara Swaha. Om Gamara Swaha. Om Gamara Swaha. You do it with the left hand. This is my left hand. Remember on the right, this three stages. Okay. And then the super mantra. <clears throat> Om Susadikara Varadhananda Mudaya Vajra Pada Hana Hana Om Pa. <laughs> Let's practice it. Om Sushadikara Varadhananda Mudaya Vajra Patahana Hana Hompa. Om Sushadikara. Om Sushadikara Varadhananda Mudaya Vajra Patahana Hana Hompa. Om Sushadikara Varadhananda Mudaya Vajra Patahana Hana Hompa. Om Shusadikara Vara Danamda Mudaya Vajra Patahana Hana Humpa. Good. I've been practicing the new mantra for three days, so I already forgot the long complex one. Although it's all concepts that we're used to. Okay. Seal number 13. With the left hand. So... The, the index is on the side of the thumb. The thumb is on the side of the index. And the other fingers touch the moon of the hand. This is, we call it the moon of the hand in some tradition. Don't know why. And that's pretty much it. Easy mudra. Om Pranamana. Bhagavate. Mahadev Gamahani Swaha. So after all of these mantras to bring consciousness and resource in the body <clears throat> and in our lives, this mantra seems pretty reverent. Pranamana is um, profound prostration. It is tempting to think as prana and mana, which means the energy in the air. But it is pra, which means a lot, or whatever follows is more dedicated. Pra, nama, na, okay? Namana is to do a prostration. Pranamana is to reverently prostrate yourself. Now, who do we revere with that mantra? Bhavagate Mahadev. I'm used to the word Bhavagate because I've been singing it and chanting mantras. With it. For some of you, it's a new word. Bhagavate is the honored one or the Lord that we honor. Mahadev, great God. Yeah, I'll, I'll get with the grammar in a moment. 
So Bhagavate Mahadev is a absolutely typical name of Shiva in the Hindu tradition. Uh, Om Namo Bhagavate Maheshwara Tri Yam Bakam Trikalaya Mahadev. It's just words that we say, various names of Shiva in salutation. Now instead of Om Namah Shiva, it's Om Pranaman Bhagavate, Bhagavate Mahadev. <clears throat> okay. It is a very exquisite version of Om Namah Shiva. Okay. It is a very enriched version of dedicating yourself in this salutation to God. <clears throat> but everything is God. So why not use Brahma or Vishnu in this case? Why do we use a specific name of Shiva? What we want with this mantra is God in the way it interacts with the world. Okay. Bhavagate Mahadev is our name of Shiva who interacts with the world. It is about feeling God in this world and not seeking God in the higher realm, but living it here where we are. And a clue to this is the final word of this mantra, well, the final expression in the central part, Gamahani. Gamahani, Gama, honey, means to climb up to the tip of the highest tree that you could find, okay? The expression Gamahani means in the highest and most refined places in nature. Okay. That's the philosophical interpretation of that. Okay. And we finish with Swaha. So the central expression to reverently prostrate in salutation to the Lord, the great God, in the most refined aspect of nature. Okay. Om Pranaman Bhagavate Mahadev Kamahani Swaha. It is written Pranamana. But like in any Sanskrit word, when a word finishes with a, you mute it a bit. Pranaman. The same with Mahadev. Mahadeva becomes Mahadev. But if you've been practicing this mantra, saying Pranamana and Mahadeva, it works. It's fine. It's just... Sanskrit pronunciation and grammar, and I'm certain that to any Hindi speaking, I have a terrible Sanskrit accent, and that's fine. <laughs> I'm a Caucasian guy, speaks French, English, and Spanish, so my Sanskrit probably is not perfect. Hmm? Like, not good. So don't worry about it. We're just making an effort, okay? So the left hand, the thumb is on the side, or the index, which means that we are in touch. It's not the, the same as transmigration, contact. We're together, okay? And the experience and the feelings are sitting on earth. Or, I mean, they call it the moon of the hand because it has that moon shape. But it is the base of the thumb, so it's, it's more like the, the earth part, <laughs> really, of the hand. So, we are incarnating in nature with this mudra. And the mind is up. The mind is still aware, so it's slightly up. 
So that was the explanation of the Muda with my left hand. This is my left hand. You see it on the, on the reverse side because of the video. The mantra again. Om Pranaman Bhagavate Mahadev Gamahani Swaha. In great adoration and reverence to God as it is found in this world. The meditation will be pleasant. It is a nice following with all we have done so far, invoking various energies invoking energies in the body, asking for more conviction, and then the pizza mantra, which is, I should not call it that way anymore. Anyway, Om Shu Sadikara Varada Namda Mudaya Vajra Patahana Hana Humpa. Okay, so the, the mantra of all medicine, because it invokes every medical part that we've learned so far, it is actually a mantra of bringing the resource in nature or in the body. <clears throat> so following that, we become in gratitude, in reverence to all that we can perceive now in nature as God, as beautiful. If you don't believe God exists, that is fine. You are in reverence with all the consciousness of the universe that is physicalized. I like to say God. And I'm still open that it might not exist. But hey, paradoxes. <laughs> <clears throat> so. We've done a lot of personal growth in the first 12 mudras. The personal growth of the general medicine mudra, or the you know the pizza mudra, the willows branch. Yeah, I should call it the willows branch. <sighs> the last one was not a specific integration, but a humbling practice to remember how important it is to do personal growth. How good we feel when we do it. And also to remember how challenging it is to break our pride when we so much want to not be offended or win an argument, be right about something, when we want to be appreciated by others, when we feel rejected, our pride just rises to the occasion and that's not how I want life. Well. Remember how it felt to do personal growth. Once the pride loosen up or even falls, how good it felt. So that's a, re that a reminder of last week's practice. This week, we're going to practice simple gratitude. We're going to rejoice of what the world brought us we're gonna try well maybe that's a personal growth part we're gonna try not to complain this week about what we're missing what we don't have and we'll try to be grateful for what we have and not be the victims of the world and the systems So let's be grateful. I'll keep on teaching after we're done with Himala. <clears throat> In the Mahakaruna Dharani Mudras, the seals that we're learning this year, I usually want you to do five minutes of mantra, more or less, and five minutes of simple contemplation. It's not much. It's just what it takes for this to be initiated. Then if you want to do more, you do more. So for the longer mantras that take more than five minutes to recite, you can do 21 recitation twice in your day, if you want. 
We'll do a full mala of this one, even if it's somewhat a longer mantra than the usual. It will take maybe more than five minutes, but this is fine. There are many words. So, mala in the right hand, mudra in the left hand. And we will go slow for the first few recitations to get used to it in the mouth. On Pranaman Bhagavate Mahadev Gamhadi Swaha Om Pranamana Bhagavate Mahadev Gamahani Swaha Om Pranamana Bhagavate Mahadev Gamhani Swaha Om Pranamana Bhagavate Mahadev Gamahani 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 Swaha We will start with accelerating just a bit Om Pranamana Bhagavate Mahadev Gamahani Swaha 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 
Om Pranamana Bhagadev Gamahani Swaha. I miss that once I'll redo it. Om Pranamana Bhagavate Mahadev Gamahani Swaha. 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 Om Pranamani Bhagavate Mahadev Gamahani Swaha. Om Pranamana Bhagavate Mahadev Gamahani Swaha. Om Pranamana Bhagavate Mahadev Gamahani Swaha. Om Pranamana Bhagavate Mahadev Gamahani Swaha. And we will pause now that we're in the middle of this mantra. We will pause. Contemplate the gratitude, the meaning of the mantra. Let's add a little personal growth there. How we, about how we like to always have more. Greed. We all dream of riches. And we forget about the virtue of equity. The virtue of equity where everyone can have equal access to emancipation and equal rights to resources. We forget about emancipation and equity. And we dream for more than the average. It's not to have more than others. We just, we just keep wanting more and more and more, which is fine to be very comfortable. It's fine. There's no, there's no problem with that. The problem is when we are very comfortable and something is taken from us, are we losing some of those resources? We complain even though we're comfortable. We forget to be grateful and we just want more. We want more. Once we have a lot of comfort, some security, a healthcare system, uh, food every day. You know, we have comfort and a bit more. We have entertainment, which is a good thing. And something is taken from us. Or at one point, some of these resources are not given anymore. We like to complain because we had more and now we're going to have less. A humbling lesson of life is as you go, you'll have less health, less strength, less will. It, it will happen. At one point, you'll grow old and die. Hopefully as comfortably as possible. But before old age, before the golden age happened, which is like 60 and above, I think, according to the cultural standards, before we realize it is health fleeting from our body and youth, well, what we, what we lose is wealth, comfort, okay? Um, I'm 48, I'm happy, uh, a wound I had in the past is healed, so I now I'm rebuilding my health to be functional, to have a good cardio, some muscle mass, and I'm happy in my body. So I'm not thinking anymore about you know the health that I lost compared to when I was 20. Now it's when I have less money than I had before. Less luxury. Ah, oh, this week I was challenged with that. With the possibility of, I have enough for what I need. But there's a possibility that I will have less in the near future. And I said, wow, it's like, it's like this, this mantra is reminding me to 
be grateful for what nature gave me and what nature provides at the moment, to be grateful now of what I have. Om Pranamana Bhagavate Mahadev Yamahani Swaha Sometimes I have lessons in life that correspond to the teaching to come. Uh, sometimes it's richer than others. This week is rich. <laughs> Equity is to accept that everything flows to everyone in not the same quantity because some people want more of a thing and less of another thing but the equal right for everyone to emancipate themselves. So for everyone to have access to the kind of resources they need, usually shelter, food and clothing is the basic for everyone. And then there's luxury and comfort, <laughs> entertainments of various types. And as it was suggested by my financial near future, that I might have to cut on the luxuries. <laughs> I'm not going to cut on food or, or the immediate needs. I'm, I might. It's not even decided yet. Life still goes on. The possibilities are endless. But there's a possibility that in the following months and then the following decade, I'll have everything I need but less luxury than before. <laughs> you know, no fancy bottle of wine or well, maybe, you know, stuff like that. It's like, wow. I was, I was disappointed for a moment that of all the things I've rejoiced in excess were now not going to be available so I can come back to a humble sense of equity and still have good quality food, time with people I love, video games to go mad. You see, I appreciate the lesson of this week in my life. And when I'm practicing this mantra, that is what it reminds me. When I lose something I had, is it greed? Is it going below the seal of equity or simply going back to equity? Because I was above it. I was above equity. Many times in our life, we have been above equity. We have more than others. There's a little karmic mechanic here. You're not responsible for other people's problems or being below equity because there's social karma, social situation. Some people just ask for it by not working how they can. And some people are stuck in complicated situation and, you know, could be dharma, could be karma. <clears throat> And yes, there are countries that don't really care for their more poor class of people. But equity means the equal right for everyone to have access to more than the minimum, to have access to emancipation, to be comfortable at a minimum and have good food, health. Purely in nature before human systems, our elders, at the first sign of sickness, would withdraw alone in the forest and let themselves die, sometimes in great pain. Think about all the things you had a few pills to take and it resolved it. Before human systems, nature, purely as it is, in the jungle, a sickness would come and kill us. So now we complain that we don't have enough quality of healthcare, that there could be manipulation about the COVID, 
that there could be abuses from the politicians. But our system, our social system, is giving us so much already. We just have the reflex of wanting more than that. It hurts our pride. It hurts our greed. It is humiliating. That when we feel we are losing, sometimes nature is just bring us, bringing us back to a comfortable state of equity. I know a few of you are actually in the, in the state of poverty. I'm sorry for that. It's not cool that life does that to some people. Sometimes it's related to your choices about working or not. And sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's life. Please try to take this lesson. When you have less of anything that you had before, can you mourn it? Can you humbly accept that nature wants to bring you back to equity? Rejoice of the excesses that you have. For example, I'm disappointed I currently cannot go visit Japan. What? <laughs> what? Taking a plane to Japan is way above equity, guys. <laughs> <laughs> this this is like okay hey can i just be you know in tune with shiva here the convection of all things you know the gamara is a phenomena of shiva the convection of all resources so nature is is telling me now it's possible that i will be brought back to equity When I started seeing it that way, I felt so relieved. Basically, long story short, I've had a very opulent life in the last five years and I was compensating for the life of poverty I had before, for when I was begging in the street. And now I've compensated a lot with a lot of luxury. I've been below the, the average and then above the average. And now life brings me in equity. Peacefully. Embracing. Can I eat every day? Do I have lodging and clothing? Basic. Then I'm good. It's so easy to be grateful for the excess, the video games and the friends, basically. That's pretty cool, right? So contemplate that before you're in your 60s. Because <laughs> eventually nature will take back the help it gave you at birth. Eventually nature will take back the sand, the protein, the fats that it gave you to build your body. It will take away the minerals that earth gave you. It will call it back. And equity will be to flow in nature again. The Buddhists have a practice of contemplating your decomposing course after your death. It's a meditation where you contemplate your decomposing course. Letting it all go back to earth. It actually brings more health to the body. When the body is not fighting nature, but in harmony with it. But of course, emotions rise while we do the practice of contemplating the decomposing body after our death. Don't worry, you're not going to manifest. It's too late. You've manifested that before birth. Okay, so stop worrying about accelerating your debt. No, it usually brings health. When the ego stops fighting death, when the denial lifts, 
and we accept it it's how nature is and then and then some kind of joy happens in the body and we actually become more healthy equity is universal and it surpasses our human local identity equity surpasses our temporal existence everything will be called back to the universe rejoice now of what you have and who you are <laughs> because you have it and it's time to celebrate okay let's just contemplate without the mala let's just contemplate the mantra do the mudra left hand thumb and index side by side major and ring finger on the moon earth and pinky relax but up om pranamana bhagavate mahadev gamahani swaha Om Pranamana Bhagavate Mahadev Gamahani Swaha. 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 Be grateful and revere the actions of Lord Shiva in the most refined aspects of nature. Contemplate equity and emancipation. Be grateful. Rejoice. If you have the patience or the discipline to do a full mala every day, I commend you. Five minutes of recitation is the minimum for this initiation to work, which is pretty good. Followed by five minutes of contemplation. of The Dharma and the suggested integration when there is one. Om Pranamana Bhagavate Mahadev Gamahani Swaha Grateful to nature. Emancipation, equity, and the humility to let go of the excess when nature brings you back to equity amongst all beings. All right. Have a very, very good week. Namaste.